We're going now. Live from Yulee, Florida. <laughs> oh, hey guys, good to see everybody again. Sorry it's been so long with one of these Ask AEACs. If you're new around here, this is where we take 10 viewer audience questions and, um, and we answer them for you guys and, and uh, try to have us some learning. But um, we're actually not filming in our usual at-home place today. We're in Yulee, Florida with Ken Hicks of Southern Precision Air Weapons. Hey, guys. If you don't know Ken... You should. Yeah, you should. He's, a, he's kind of a big name in our industry if, um, if you're familiar with the circuit. The Extreme Bench Rest in Arizona, the Pyramid Air Cup in, in Ohio, the uh, Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge in Utah. Ken's a guy that always seems to place in the top 10 in several several um he's the guy several he's disciplines because he's taking your spot you know at, at those events and i think uh this year you were at the at the extreme bench rest you were second in the 100 yard yep. it's a big deal that was big money for yep. you and you were third in the big bore yep and it seems like you're always posting up in the 25 meter mm -hmm. but uh but ken also has a uh, has a, an air gun business where he does tuning and you're a dealer for FX and Daystate and Brocock and Rapid Air Weapons. Rapid Air Weapons, Raw, Air, Air Force, Force Raw. Mm hmm. But, uh, so he's I guess. He's show and tell. He, he, <laughs> Ken's going to be a show and tell. I think he's got a show and tell. And he's just going to help us get through some of your questions. You know, he's, he's uh, I'm sure, going to have a lot to, uh, a lot to offer. Are you so, ready? So, Katya, I'm turning it over to you. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I got my so, naked. This one. Go. I don't think we're allowed to do that. It's not YouTube. that kind of party. It's Steve. not that kind of YouTube channel. It's a naked party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first question is from Paul58 on the refilling an air gun video. Can air be left in these guns for a long period of time? So, do you want me to kick it off? Good. So, I, I, I store, I've, the, the manufacturers will tell you to store air in them because they want the seals in the guns to have some kind of pressure on them because that keeps out the dirt, the atmosphere, the moisture, it keeps it outside the gun. So you, oh. want, lo you want load on those seals. Kind of like yep. a gas tank in a car. Yeah, you fill up a gas tank yeah. to keep the moisture out of it. Huh. Yeah. Well trained over here. Good, yeah. job. Good job, baby. Yeah, it ke keeps pressure on the seals and keeps the integrity uniformed on the seals. So, you know, if, you <clears throat> if they're relaxed and, you know, they happen to dry out while they're relaxed, then you go to refill the gun you're most likely going to have a leak. Yeah. So just keep some air in it. Yeah. I always do half. Like I've stored I've stored air guns that are $500. I've stored air guns that are $2,000 for five years or more. Always keep them at, at half of their max. And I've never had a problem. Mm -hmm. What do you store them at? I store them wherever I leave them at. Okay, wherever you leave <laughs> off. He's not that particular. Yeah, I'm not that particular. Yeah. I keep it simple. This will be good. This will be like um, Felix and... What was that show with the two guys? Oh, the odd couple, that? Felix and Oscar. Yeah, oh, Felix gosh. and Oscar. This yeah. is Felix and Oscar. Episode. Well, kinda, you know. Ken is. Um, yeah, you're definitely Felix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to like tuning and servicing, you know, you're you're a particular dude, and that's why you have the following. Yeah, that's, At least that's yeah. what always been my perception that's of true. you. I mean, that there's not a lot of dealers. You know, there are some, but there's not a lot of dealers that will tune and shoot um, pretty much any every gun that you. But it put out the door to a customer, right? Yeah. Yep. That's kind of. A big I just, deal. I just, you know, I, I, I provide that service because I just, I don't want any surprises, and you know, it, and it happens. I mean, they're all man, they're man-made, and you know, you might have a problem here, but it just eliminates a lot of the problems from the get-go, and you know, just makes the customer experience better. Taking the gun out of the box, scoping it up, and mm -hmm. shooting it, and being ready to go. Would it be fair to say that um, your sure. expertise for tuning and Again, this is my perception, so if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but kind of around Day State and FX is where you're... Yeah, Day State, FX, and RAW. Okay, you're good at tuning RAWs, too? Yep. You have a little bit of smoothie right there. I caught in my goat, in my yeah, beard. Yeah, in your, in your mustache. If somebody buys a gun from you, is, is do you charge a service fee to, to put a tune on it? Like, how does that work? Uh, it depends on how in depth if we go. I mean, if they, if they call me up and say, I need this gun to, you know, shoot shoot the slugs and drop coyotes or whatever then you know I'll spend a little extra time and, and pull extract the power out of the gun mm -hmm. but just you know if you just call me up and say I need a gun I'm gonna be shooting squirrels in the backyard and this you know plump plinking or shooting paper I'll, I'll set the gun up 
to where it's efficient and has a good shot count and where it's still accurate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just send it off like that. And, you know, I, I tape off the gauges and everything a couple of days just to make sure there's no leaks and, mm -hmm. and uh, just basically set it up to where it's most efficient, most accurate, most enjoyable. What if somebody's like not your customer and they want their gun tuned? Is then that I, a service you provide? Yeah, I do I do provide that service and, and uh, there's a fee to it, you know, I pay for my time and the shop materials and, you know, all the pellets going through. But yeah, there is a service to that. What's the range? What does that typically run? Uh, it, Broad any, range. Anywhere from 150 to $250. Okay. But most of the time when they Layla. come to me, they need some repairs and they need some love and everything. So, they, you know, a lot of that covers my oil rings and all that, okay. that kind of stuff. If it's a hard part, then, you know, I have to charge them for the hard parts. But Cool. I like it. Layla shook the camera. She did. We have a doggy down here. We got three doggies back here. And two of them weigh more than I do. I don't know about doggies. <laughs> More like horses, miniature horses. We got horses. three horses around here. Um, okay. Ken's got great things. So next question is from Spec Op 9069. It is Spec Op. Spec Op? Oh, Spec Op. Spec Op. Oh, I've heard that as a special cop. Spec special, Op makes, yeah. Spec Op special makes more sense. Okay, so Spec Op 9069. It is posted to the Air Venturi Avenger Point Two Two review. Steve, have you ever done a review of the Hot Sun AT44 QE in 25 caliber or had any experience with it? Um, Just so answer this as a yes or no question. Yes and no. <laughs> it's just such a, sorry, it's not an open-ended question. I thought it'd be funny if you were like, yes, well, there's next a question. There's a partial truth in there. Back when I was getting my start, before I got into the video, Air Gun Depot would send guns for online reviews. Yeah. I had an agreement with them, and one of the ones that I reviewed for them was the AT44 and 22 Cal. And I'm pretty sure if you go to the Air Gun Depot website, you can find those that review article in their in their what they call their Air Gun Vault. Oh, the article? Yeah, well, the article with the mm. photographs. That's how I used to do them. We're going early here. Yeah, we're going vintage back in, back in the day. Ooh. And I um, I took that gun to Tenorock Shooting Sports, which is a range out in Lakeland in Central Florida. And I was shooting that gun out at 100 yards, and you know that gun in the wind had no problem with like two inch groups at 100 yards, two two and a half. And I'm sure if on a still day, the barrel was a one inch MOA barrel. And so, how it, relevant would that review be? Because that was like years ago. I don't think that gun has changed a whole whole lot. Like mm -hmm. it's it's um, the way they have it decored may have changed. They're built like tanks. They are. The hot suns are built real well. The barrels are always good. The triggers are always well. Most of the their quattro triggers are real good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't care much for the one on uh, their semi-autos. It's real heavy. I'll be uh, picking it's like, up. It's like an AR trigger. I'll be picking up Hotson in the future. I once. hope you do, buddy. You need it because you have you've got these price points covered with Day State, Brocock, FX, and Raw. Yeah, it's mostly high end. Yeah. So hot sun is a good. I've never put my hands on a hot sun that I couldn't get to perform at 100 yards, and um, like I said, the triggers are good. It's not a big efficiency gun unless some of them are neutron star. I got a, a big efficiency gun, stuff. but Nova Star can be a. You know, they got it's some model guns. Definitely but. be picking them, picking them more the entry level. I mean, I, I would say hot sun's a little, little above entry level, kind of like mid range. Yeah, you're, you're, you're probably on their PCPs. You're kind of three to, three to seven hundred and yeah. three to eight hundred price point yeah. typically, but you get a lot for that thousand. three to eight hundred yep. bucks. And now they're offering carbon fiber bottles. Yep. And um, that Neutron Star, I mean, in that Nova Star, they look yep. like, uh, like they were regulated. My shot charts, but they yep. weren't. So they're really zeroing in on their tuning, with their valves out of the factory. Yep. It's all good stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely be picking them up once the uh, once the do, once the new facility is built. Tell Blaine I sent you. Oh yeah, Blaine knows me. <laughs> you want to talk a little bit about your new facility? I, I wasn't going to say nothing. I didn't know. Uh, Maybe it's a secret. Well, oh. it's out now, isn't it? Well, you are just a chatterbox. Yeah, there's people in the industry that that know about it, but yeah, uh, right now Southern Precision is kind of like we're outgrown where we're at now is basically my own house so you know we're looking at probably possibly by 2022 having a, a full-blown facility brick and mortar indoor range with a 200 yard indoor range no not meter. no probably probably like 
you know, I want to I want to at least get like 50 yards indoor, but it yeah. just depends on yeah, what I can get for engineering. For sure. But the big thing is, it's going to have at least 50 to 75 outdoor benches mm. for big competitions. That'll be nice. And you're in. Um, if you guys don't know where Yulee, Florida is, we're kind of uh, right up on the Florida. Georgia border, yeah. so that's a really nice central location in the U.S. And our winters here are beautiful. Pretty much Christmas through Easter every year here yeah. is paradise. Yeah, in this part of the world. Yeah. So you know, basically have a have a, a extreme bench press, uh, Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge type of event. competition event in the winter time in Florida because the weather here is ideal. The only bad thing about it is our days are really short, so we don't have a whole lot of sun. But you know, they make big lights for that kind of stuff. Yeah, you have night night sure. lighting. That'd be sweet. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna make a little fun of Ken. You know, he's got a nice home here in Yulee, and that's where we're at. As you can see, hundred yard range is literally right behind us on the back side of the pool here. He's got his concrete benches and everything. But this yeah. is not a small house, and one, two. Like three bedrooms, the kitchen, and the garage, the, garage. <laughs> the, dining room, the dining room, the dining room. I mean, let me just say, it, when I walked in here, it was very clear to me that this man is doing a huge book of business out yeah. of here. So I'm glad to hear that you're getting the yeah, shop, I'm getting Marty. This, because his, why you talk? You guys, you guys freak out when, like, they watch like my gun cleaning video, yeah. and they're like, I can't believe you're cleaning that gun on that sofa or on that kitchen counter or yeah. on the carpet. Your wife is gonna kill you. Well, this man has like the, the Marty most has a lot of patience. patient wife. On, <laughs> oh, yeah. In fact, she's Marty chilling. No, so Marty's not coming on the video. Come on. No, she's, she's shy. shy. No, she's it. been supportive from the get go, from, from day one. And, and uh, it's just, it's, you know, I thank all my customers and, and everything out there. And, and I've just blown the business up. And we're at the point now where we're ready to take that big step and put something on the East Coast for everybody to come yeah. to. Yeah. That'll be nice. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. Everyone could go for vacations in addition to the competition. It'll be nice not yep. to have to travel halfway across the country to, yeah, you're you know, only to cover here, an event for you guys. Here, you're only two hours away from, from Savannah and probably yep. about two hours away from Orlando. Yeah, it's 30 minutes from the international airport. Yeah. yeah. Got Jacksonville, right, is, is, would be your big hub yeah. in and out of here? Yeah, probably. Jacksonville would be the hub. And we got, you know, the surrounding areas of tours. You know, it's right on the beach. Yeah. You guys want to do beach stuff while you're here? Ten too? minutes yeah, from the beach. Yeah, it's very cool. Little here. seagull action. I'm excited yeah. for you. Here. Awesome. <laughs> Seriously. It's good for you. All right, I'm gonna keep you guys on track because this is question we got ten two, questions. and <sighs> this is gonna be ridiculous. Yeah. So for the Hot Sun AT44 QE, yeah, you like it? Oh yeah, that was a. It's a lot of performance to the value. I shot the two two. The two two did great at fifty and hundred yards. But okay. check, if you if you were if you were to Google, maybe Steve Shally. And Hudson AT44 and Air Gun Depot, it'll probably yeah, pull up cool. that archived article for you. Into yeah. Google. Okay. Man, they got a big following. Yeah. In the aftermarket. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of tuning ups for you there. Okay, next one. This is from Dingfelder Smurfalot. Smurfalot? Smurfalot. 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 Isn't smurfing like a sexual Indian in innuendo for something? I don't know. No one know. It is. I, I mean, guess that's a short people joke. Yeah. <laughs> we should ask. Don't make me get on my fat people jokes. <laughs> we should ask Jay. Maybe he knows. Um, this is against the Benjamin Marauder point two two pistol. Against it? You know, the question was posted oh, to that in video. that video. Yes. How about someday do a video on Marauder mods? It's an extremely popular gun to mod with the range from easy projects you can do yourself to CNC machine parts from a variety of vendors, some of which take some real know-how, tools, and or confidence. Because we don't mod guns. That's why. Well, no. Hold on. <laughs> hold, hold the phone. I took the liberty of answering that question. So the Benjamin Marauder is probably one of the most, if not the most popular, pre-charged pneumatic on planet Earth as far as sales traditionally. What about Mars? Over the years, maybe Mars too. <laughs> maybe Mars too, so it's got a huge following. And for those of you that don't know, I think it was about two years ago that Crossman Corporation was taken over by Velocity Outdoors, which is a ginormous outdoor sporting good company. And um, of course, usually when that happens, there's a shakedown process and then layers of management get replaced. Long story short there, um, in June, in late June of this year, Nick Andrews, who
who is uh, Crossman Corporation's new Vice President of Marketing, and um, uh, did a Zoom call with me, and had big or has big plans to move a lot of product through AEAC, and one of them is the Benjamin Marauder semi-automatic, the oh. new semi-auto Marauder. And so if I get that opportunity, like they've said that they want to give us, um, I'll, I'll reach out to some of the um, some of the vendors that make aftermarket parts for that gun. You're going to mod it? Well, if I can get their permission and they're willing to, you know, sponsor the slot, then yeah, we'll host them and, and we'll try to do some fun stuff with that. I'm totally open, open with that. Have you ever modded a Benjamin Marauder? I have not. You're kind of the king of mods. Yeah, I, I kind of did. I did a baby Benjamin Marauder. It's called a Discovery. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a joke <laughs> it, there. I it, don't know nothing. It, so if it's the next, it's the next gun down. Like oh, okay. Originally, it, it was like one. Of, oh gosh, the Discovery. Long time. Two hundred dollar yeah. price point, been around a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Since yeah. I was a kid. But there's there's a ton of people Since out you were there. A kid. Okay. A ton of people out there just doing stuff to those guns. Well, if you guys know, maybe I can get your help on this. You know, if you know companies that that you like or you are fond of that that make aftermarket performance parts for the Marauder, please reach out to them. Let them know of what I just shared with you and have them contact me. Airgunsteve at gmail.com is yep. my email. Richard Dudak on Facebook, he does a lot of cross the work. There you go. Cool. Yeah, so man, so... I'm down. We could someday do it, is the short answer. I was supposed to see the gun in August, but that was when we talked in late June. I don't know if that's still the timetable. I haven't seen it, mm. but to give you guys, that's 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 about all I know. You should probably follow up with them, like, mid-September. I don't, I won't need to. They were, um, uh, Philip Guadalupe is the product manager for Crossman Corporation, and uh, it was a conference, a Zoom call with him and Nick, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, they, they've, they'll, They'll reach out to me when they're ready. When they feel like the product is there, they'll reach out and they're all ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're going to have a big mar marketing campaign kickoff push. Oh, And the, true. the timing of that I is very that sensitive. I imagine that would be very, very it's popular. It's a big thing for a big company like that to yeah. coordinate. And so they'll reach out to me when they're ready. True. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Um, this is from Chris Burkhalter. It is a question posted to the Gamo Swarm Maxim Point Two Two. Hey, Steve. Babe, hey, Chris. You are a mess with that smoothie. Like, a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Steve. It's very veggie. Great. It's very visible. Great channel and great review. Thanks. Quick question. It's not a quick question. Thank you. I Thanks, recently Chris. owned a Swarm Whisper and discovered what you did in that every hundred shots the barrel would get dirty and need cleaning. Did you clean simply with ballistol as you expressed in your cleaning video or was there something different you did? My barrel would tend to change its preferred pellet every few hundred shots so I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong. Ballistol never worked well for me as I couldn't get it out of the barrel and the best result was achieved in my case with non-chlorinated brake cleaner. But after around a thousand shots, a thousand shots, no matter what I could, no longer no matter what, I could no longer achieve a grouping, leading me to a warranty return. Any insights you can offer would be well appreciated. Yeah, that's a great question. So the ball, um, there's a lot there to answer. The ballistol is half of the formula, okay? Mm. Ballistol is a great product. I use it on my powder burning firearms, I use it in air guns. Um, but it's really important that you partner the ballistol with an appropriate cleaning kit. I swear by and use only Patchworm. And the reason I use Patchworm, one is because it's $8 a kit, and two, the Patchworm is basically the weed whacker string method, where it has a sharpened point, you push the patch mm -hmm. through it. They also sell the little plugs, and it has a stopper at the end, but they also will sell different caliber collars that slide to the end of that caliber. 177, 22, 2530, mm -hmm. I mean all the way up to 410, 12 gauge shotgun, I mean they've got them all. And the reason those co collars are so important is they'll take that cleaning patch soaked in the ballistol and they'll, they'll hold it very tightly on the walls of the barrel and they'll help it pull that lead out. Yep. It'll so get down in the valleys. It'll even get down in, yeah, in the, in the, in the um, uh, rifling valleys. And I've always found that using ballistol with that, I, pull, I can pull a tremendous amount of deep lead mm -hmm. out of the rifling grooves just with that gentle formula. 
I always prefer that rather than going to like a, a Croil or you like that uh, Hopi is number nine for your ARs we were talking mm -hmm. about, about yeah. earlier. I like to go mild. So to answer your question very specifically, 99.9999% of the time I'm using Ballastol and a patchworm, uh, and that's it to, to get my barrels clean. Yeah. Now, what he was talking about was very interesting is my gun wants a different pellet as I, as I get the barrel seasoned and let it up. You know, you get 100 shots in, it wants something different. You do another 100 shots, you want something different. Yeah. That is completely normal, and what is happening is there are high spots in your barrel that are, that are de uh, collecting deposits of lead as the pellet goes down the rifling. And so the tolerances of your barrel will change, and because of that, it'll wind up liking a different pellet, or maybe the same pellet, but from a different tin in a different batch. It's very common to see that. So it's like the a cast iron skillet. Yeah. Well, you know, these in an inexpensive gun like the Gamo, you know, they're not taking a lot of time at, at the factory level to smooth the inside of that barrel. Now this guy, he could speak a lot to this and, and I'll just send him off here, but what I'll do to smoothen the inside of a barrel is I'm I'm removing the barrel so it has no O-rings or anything on it, and I'm using JB bore paste and I'm using a mop, like a wool bore mop just going back and forth and polishing that barrel and you'll find that you can knock off a lot of those high spots that will hold on to that lead and really and in doing so you, you really extend your time between cleanings. Um, yeah. Ken maybe you can kind of take it away from here because this is your area of expertise. Well basically I'm going to come off of what you said I mean the more you do the more you're refining the barrel. I mean you're, you're, you're smoothing it out but the biggest thing I'd probably recommend is don't let it go so long find the pellet, clean the barrel, find the pellet that works with the some, you know, somewhat clean barrel and stay with that pellet and just clean it more often. Every hundred rounds. Yeah. Perfect. Is that normal just, just to clean, clean it more it often? often? When 25 meter I shoot it after every, uh, I'll clean my barrel after every target shot. Really? Yeah. Depends on the barrel. Some barrels? Like 50 shots. Yeah. You can put a, you put a thousand rounds through yeah. them, and they'll shoot the same as they did. Yeah. And another thing and I tell do. people is, if, you, you can't. if you're going from different yeah. pellet, different pellet, different pellet, clean that barrel between those pellets. Uh, I found that you know if I if I, if I'm shooting one type of pellet for a hundred rounds, and then I want to try another pellet to see if that does better, I, I feel like I need to clean the slate. Mm and start with that pellet uh, again and season the barrel back in with this new pellet and see how if it tightens up. Um, it's, it's a lot of time consuming, a lot of patches, a lot of shoulder work, but... But that's know, why we that's, love air gunning. That's the fun part of air gunning. And that's what's neat, you get the different perspectives. You know, you got a professional shooter here giving you that. It's always been my experience that I've never experienced that. Mm -hmm. And I like to do the, all the different pellets, so I always tell people that hasn't been mine. But you know, the truth probably lies somewhere in between. And it's going to be different with every pellet and every gun. Yeah, every pellet's different. The lead's a little bit different in every pellet. So if you're if you're taking that gun back to zero, taking that barrel back to zero on the barrel cleaning, mm -hmm. and re-season it in with that pellet, yeah. and then I think that I, I find I get better results. Yeah. But if I feel like that pellet's just not coming together and it's not doing it, yeah. then I'll clean the barrel again and try the next type of pellet. I, I agree with Ken 100%. If I owned that Gamma Swarm Maxim, I would be using that pellet that I liked when the barrel was Gamma clean. Gamma Swarm Whisper. Gamma Swarm Whisper. And I'd be cleaning the barrel as soon as I saw accuracy go away, even I, if that's every hundred shots. I would I'd be maintaining that sweet spot in the barrel. Yep. But yeah, that, that's another way to do it. Like, you don't have to pull the ballast all through. You can pull one or two dry patches through, and that might just be enough to get you back to where that, that barrel's in that state leave where it little, wants to leave be. Leave a little gray on the patch. Yep. A little gray in the That's what I tell a lot of my rapid customers. Does, so, I know he didn't mention patches, but is there a technique to clean a barrel without patches, like just with ballastol or just with non-chlorinated brake cleaner? No, uh, I, 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 I mean, not that you guys yeah. recommend, obviously, but I I'm always curious, use patches, like yeah. if people do have that. Well, technique, one thing you can do is like, I don't use like brushes. Or even did like he say that. he had a two-two, right? Um, he did not. He did not indicate caliber. What's the yeah, it's 2 2. Well, it's against the question is posted to 2, but he's talking about his form whisper and he does not tell you what caliber All he right. has. Well, I guess the, the path I was going down was I, I keep a lot of different diameter patches 
and I start with a smaller diameter patch and I work it out and out and out and out with a larger and larger patch, increasing the pressure of the pull mm -hmm. until I, I, I can't pull it through anymore. And so there may be some tuning you can do it there. You pull a smaller patch through mid clean to Ken's point, you might just need a puller through and you've, you've reset it. But, um, yeah. but me, I tend to just clean them all the way clean, shoot them 10 or 15 times. Usually that's enough to get it back to where it was. Yeah. And uh, 10, 15, 20 max. And then, and then I'll start grouping, no matter if it's a brake barrel, a PCP, that's always kind of been my experience. Okay, so you should be pulling some kind of patch through that, through that barrel. Yeah, you especially, can't just like spray cleaner oh, in there. No, like, no, 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 no. You're, you're sparingly spraying the patch, yeah. okay. pulling it through, and you pull a dry one through, or you pull a couple wets and a dry. I gotcha. You know, you don't want to get it too, so, I mean, you can, Okay. But you don't want all that muck falling, but he has a brake barrel back down into his, yeah. his spring piston. It doesn't make any sense to me either. I just want to double check because huh? maybe... Diesel on you. Yeah, you sound like a little 22 <laughs> empire. Maybe some people might. Okay, next question. This was from Mark Hall, and it's posted to the Hot Sun Flash Pup .22. Question is, has anyone found a good slug for Hot Sun Bull Balls .177? Mm. <laughs> so... Here, here's the goofy thing. First, first I will say, when you're done watching this video, go over to my other YouTube channel. If you're new here, the big channel. This is a little offshoot of that. The Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, or AEAC Home. Put that in YouTube, it'll take you right there. And look for my Hatsan Neutron Star video. That gun was an absolute slug lover in 2.2. And what I found is, once a manufacturer, and a lot of them have, They've figured out how to get their barrels to get along with slugs. That, that tells me that I feel like the hot sun barrels are going to get along with the slugs that the Oregon industry is putting out. One. Two, he asked specifically about hot sun bull the boss one, point one, seven, 177. So I just received, um, over the last few weeks, my first batch of 177 slugs. They're prototypes. They're from NSA or Nielsen Specialty Ammo, made right here in the USA. And um, I'm testing them now in the Daystate Red Wolf High Power 177. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, Hooked on Air, you'll know that I'm a day into that test. I've been putting a lot of my results up there. And then there'll be a vlog on this channel sharing my results. And then there'll be a full review on the big channel, AEAC Home. Um, and the results are mind-blowing so far. With that Nielsen Special TMO, there's a 12 grain. He basically has a 12, a 15, and a 21, if I remember. Those are the three that I've got, and damn. Is the Bull Boss the same as the one you're talking about? It's a different gun, but he's looking for a 177 slug to try in his gun, and as far as I know, there's one, there's one 177 slug available. Yeah, they're kind of, they're, that I even know of. Late, late coming yeah. to the market. So start I believe there. the knockouts are coming in 177. Oh, they're all going to do it. JSB is going to do it. h and going to do it. FX is going to do it with their hybrid. Yeah. Why'd you chuckle when you hear the question? Huh? What's Why'd that? you chuckle when you heard the question? Oh, I, 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 I get that question so much about the slugs. Do you? Yeah. yeah. And Everybody specifically slug. for what slug, slug, what slug, slugs in what general. What slug is going to work for this? You know? Yeah, people are excited. I, I, we yeah. have a lot more questions slug related. It's, it's kind of like going back to the cleaning the barrel. It's, it's, you're going to have to do your homework yeah. and find a slug. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and resetting the, reset the barrel between every type of slug. And, and then start, you know, if you see something that looks kind of good, then start playing with yeah. the tune on the gun. And yeah. it's, it's a lot of work. And I get a lot of people that want me to tune the gun for a slug. And I just, you know, I just don't have the time. And, it's very time consuming. Yeah. I will say, I did find with that Day State Red Wolf and 177, it loved that. Um, it loved those 12 and 15 grain slugs at like 980 and 1,000 feet per yeah. second. Oh, that polygonal, which, polygonal barrel. Lee. It's got a Lothar Walther custom polygonal barrel. And um, it's just weird being able to shoot up out of an air gun, shoot a projectile that fast mm -hmm. and have it be as accurate as it was. That was the, yeah. the goofy part for me, but 980 to 1,000 was the sweet spot. Well, that polygonal barrel is not aggressive on that slug. Is that what it is? I mean, it's. it's hills and valleys it's not cliffs and plateaus mm -hmm. so it's not tearing into that slug and affecting it you know it, it's not putting up screws in the slug to where the, mm -hmm. it's being affected to the to the, the elements trajectory. right nice and the, and the rawls have the same type of barrel in them as well too cool hmm. and fx is with their smooth twist same yep. thing very minimal bite so that when that pellet's doing its spiral it's not not nice. get that's not mucking stabilizing. it stabilizing yep 
So is the point you said the point one seven only has one slug right now? That I know of. Yeah, there, there's there's okay. some out there, but as far as the big the big the big name Where guys, you can buy them yeah. in volume. Yeah, the big name guys probably NSA right now, Neil. Yep, Neil. Okay, and it sounds like there's some that are be, continued to be made. Oh, they're coming. They're coming. Okay. JSB, H and N, and yeah. FX. They're going to have them. Up to nine millimeter slugs. You know? They're coming. They don't want to put out junk, and so they they don't want to put it out unless it's tested. Makes sense. Tested and proven. Like so the it's, Corona it's vaccine. And believe me, like if you guys haven't caught caught the H and N Sport factory tour video I did in Germany, or the JSB pellet factory tour video I did in the Czech Republic, I mean those guys have walls of guns. So they're trying to make these things at the factories. They're trying to make these pellets and slugs work with as much as they can. It's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. Ready? I think so. Okay. Do I, do I have naked ahead. on my lip? There's four more questions. You're getting, you're getting through it. No, that was good. You did good. Yeah, you did good. Okay. This is from Steve West. Steve hey, West. Steve. Steve. It's posted to Air Venturi Avenger Tuning Guide. Mm -hmm. Have you ever... I, I can't get rid of this Great Dane hair. Ugh. Have you ever experienced Are the Are you hammer? sure it's a Great Dane hair? I hope it's a Great Dane hair. <laughs> if my other option is something else. Anyway. Have you ever experienced the hammer screw moving on its own while shooting? Unbelievable. I was being dirty and you didn't pick up on oh, it. Oh, I picked up on it. You were just being a lady. I mean... <laughs> have, she didn't ignore it. What's the question? Yeah, I forgot the question. I remembered his name. His I name was going to start reading it again. <laughs> have you ever experienced the hammer screw moving on its own while shooting? With the Avenger? With, with the, this is to the Air Venturi Avenger tuning guy. Have you ever experienced the hammer screw, hammer screw moving on its own while shooting? Was all dialed in, shooting great for a couple of days, then one day could not hit a bull in the ass. Thought it was my scope going wacky on me. Nothing I did with the scope helped. Then checked velocity was way off. Checked the hammer screw and it was all the way in. Backed it out to where I had it. Bang, spot on. It's really weird to me that it would work itself in. Because it has to work itself yeah. against the force of the spring that's in there. I've um, I've never I never had that, and I did probably five thousand rounds through the, that Avenger for for everything all together. Yeah. Um, that being said, I remember the owner's manual said that every hundred shots, the spring can kind of settle or break in, and it could change. But it's it's really really weird to me that have you ever seen a hammer spring turn itself in? Against the force? Of no, the, usually it's like turns itself out. Turns and itself lose, out. And you start losing velocity. Yeah. If but wait, did he say that he was losing velocity? He said he just said it was way off. Yeah. That's a weird one, man. I'd almost be like questioning my kids, like interrogation. Were you messing with my Avenger? Because for that screw to work itself clockwise against the spring, and there's quite a bit of force on there, I don't see how that could even happen. Hmm. Maybe it was a fluke. I mean, I'm not familiar with the gun or how it's... it's, make, it's make, there's make a hammer way. spring adjuster right on the back, and it's, it's an L in it. Yeah. Presses right on the gun. There's a sleeve there, and it's just or presses right on the uh, back of the spring. Maybe it's like put, every other maybe gun. Maybe put a drop of something on it. Just a, a drop of something on it to. You'd have to take it apart to get yeah. to that. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's but no, weird. man, that's weird that it would work itself in. Real weird. Yeah. Uh, that's unheard of. Yeah, Launch the CSI investigation. Yeah, man. I think one of the grandkitties or something's been meddling. The cat. It's always the cat. It's always the cat. Okay. Ready. This is from Rzage One. It was posted to the FX Impact Master Tuning Guide. Steve, excellent video. But now in 2020, they don't supply a magazine with a rifle kit. Kind of stupid if you ask me, as it's like selling the kit without a probe or liner. So I'm gonna start this, and then if you could help us finish it. Sure. Um, so I was part of that launch and really privy to that, and I've helped them, you know, in the helped FX in its marketing with with those kits and liners and stuff every step of the way. And I've always been told, or I've been told from the very beginning, that magazines were never part of the kit. So, yeah, um, so for them, for, I don't, I don't know who told you that uh, they just started that this year, but maybe that's a local dealer of yours that just started selling them with their kit. But as far as it coming from FX to the dealer, it, the magazines have never been um, included, and there's some reasons for that. One, a lot of the barrels in the magazines are interchangeable between guns, 
And a lot of customers will, ha will have one gun and want different length barrels or a barrel that's designed for pellets or slugs. Um, and they don't want to have to purchase a magazine with each one of those barrel liner kits because the magazines are spendy. Oh, yeah, yeah they are. They are. Um, Do you maybe... FX has magazines, like leftover model magazines that they never, like, were maybe dysfunctional or something? They made them into magnets. But you saw they that at the factory. They so awesome. I told them they should sell them. They are like, no. They weren't dysfunctional. They had a surplus of them because they changed the Oh, is that the what it is? You go to the FX factory in Sweden and all the refrigerators... They're so cool. ...have the little magazines holding their little They're company-wide so memos cool. everywhere. They're so cool. The best idea ever. It looks amazing. Anyway, sidebar. But, but, Ken, you've been selling the kits at a spa. Maybe you can speak to... Oh, well, I mean, you gotta you got to look at it this way. If they include the magazine with everyone, I mean, if you... If you're not changing the calibers, let's say you're going from a, a 600 millimeter to a 700 or vice versa, and you really don't want that extra expense, well then, you know, it's it's not going to be tacked on with it. I mean, the average, the 700 millimeter barrel is like $430 for the kit. Um, you know, by the time you put a magazine on, you're going to be right there at $500 mark. Uh, any other gun out there that you go to switch the barrel and calibers on it, you, you know, you're talking you know, anywhere six to seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So you know the price is still is still there. But um, plus, a lot of people are not using the high capacity magazines. I still get a ton of guns in that have the standard little magazines, and you know, it just probably makes it a little easier on logistics. And it's not that hard just to add it to your cart when you when you check out if you need another magazine. Are they like twenty five bucks? No, they're a lot more. Than no, that. they're like seventy-five dollars. Yeah, that's a damn nice. But that magazine does holds pellets, slugs, yeah. performs with all of them. It's pro, it's proven in competition where big money's on yeah. the line. So that magazine's worth it. But and, but and like you were saying too, now now you can take an impact barrel and slide it into a Wildcat or a Dreamline, and then you got a di whole totally different magazine. So it's just it's just easier to sell it without the magazine, and you know, and just. Add it to the cart if you need a magazine. Yeah, it keeps the cost down. I think for those that don't who don't want to have it, but it's not included. That's misinformation. No. If someone it's told never, you that it was never included, yeah, they're never having some fun with of. you, or maybe they gave you some misinformation. Maybe they gave them a, not, a freebie. Well, there could be a dealer yeah. that's saying, "Here's the kit," yeah. and they're tacking on a magazine every time. Oh, and maybe they included the cost exactly of the yeah, I mean, into that's, the cost. That's, yeah. that's no on the dealer. Thing. No such thing as a free lunch. I've had that like half off on the magazine or something. Yeah, you know. right. Make a These sale. These glasses are amazing. Yeah. Holy shit. I wish you would guys had me like. You wearing Ken's shooting glasses? I think I had them on an EBR. <laughs> they are amazing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Glasses. Is this going to be weird? Like before? I don't think that's going to work. Well, you could try. After. Hold it really close. Can you see the difference? I don't know. Before? After. <laughs> yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. They make everything bright. It looks like a bright, sunny day, but like. It's not. It's taking a bite out of it. It's not. Yeah, like it's not like a bright sunny day without your sunglasses. It's a bright sunny day, and you don't have to squint. It is amazing. Are these shooting glasses? Yeah. Or are they sunglasses? Yeah, they're shooting glasses. They're shooting glasses. Yeah, I but got you those. Wear them all I the think time. I got those out of Arizona. They actually came with like three different lenses, like a, a fogged out shooting lens and a clear lens. And Who makes them? E S S. E S S. E S S. E Either I got them in Arizona or my wife got them for me for Christmas. Yes, yes. These are fabulous. Egg sucking shooter. Crossbow. Crossbow is the name on them. Hmm. These are amazing. She scrolled out on us. She is. Hey, okay. hit, give us another try question. It, try it. Try it. Give, give it. Oh my God. Oh my God, Stephen. Give us another question. Oh yeah. Wow. Amazing. That's bright. Wow, I've looked through shooting glasses before. Scratched them, you so. bought them. Okay, you ready? This is from Ask an Ask AEC video to the Avenger. It's from ben, Bill Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds' brother. You wish. I said you wish. <laughs> Bill, if you know Ryan, holler. Okay. <laughs> Hi again, Steve. <laughs> Hi again, I'm Steve. I'm a miniature Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Hi again, Steve. On the mag problem with the Avenger. I measured the magazine and the gun, and it's the magazine. It stops at the slot. Mm. But I had slid the barrel out earlier to my asking the question that you answered. Thank, thank you for your help. Thank you for your support and help. Weird, huh? 
Yeah, so not weird. Like, so what he was asking in the prior question, that was a, a reply. Yeah, I need some context. Yeah, the context is on the event. He said that he couldn't get his magazine in his Avenger, and he didn't understand why. But in the Avenger, when you remove the barrel, if you reinstall the barrel too far into mm -hmm. the receiver, you can't slide the magazine in. It blocks it. FX is the same way. They, all these, pretty much any rifle brands, the same way. Ken, you can speak to that. You take yeah. these things apart daily. Yeah, well, I've seen I've seen it a lot to where it's like on the FX guns. They have the brass transfer port on it. Yeah, and they'll have the index slot on there. Yeah, that's got a little. It's got a little. Well, it wears, and so eventually, if you, I mean, if people shoving them in there and stuff, it'll, it'll get to the point where that that transfer port will start coming back here into the magwell. Yep. And basically, you just loosen it up. You know, loosen up the snug snug screw and just eyeball it flush and tighten it back down and you're good to go. Another good way, how I always do it is whenever I reinstall a barrel on a gun, I always put the magazine yep. in it. Put the magazine in. And, and, and you don't want it like totally firm on the magazine to where you can't get the magazine in and out, but you want it, you want it close so that there's not a whole lot of slop in there. I think those are coming home with us. <laughs> <laughs> They're so amazing. Yeah. Can we talk about this? Well, at the, at, let's do it at the end. No, there's two more questions. I want a break. Okay. The boss about. wants a break. Let's Ken, show, Ken, show and tell. Oh. Let's talk about this because I just I mostly want to talk about this. Go ahead. Look. Don't point oh it at nobody. Okay. They're all gonna have a meltdown. Okay. First of all, it's a little bit it's a little bit heavy. How do I do this? What do you want to do? I want to put it down. Uh, oh, you have to push these in. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Can you guys see this right here? Pull it close to us. No, I it. want people to see this. This is so fancy to me. Let me get next to you. They're all going to shout. You're pointing a gun at Steve's head. So check this out. I don't know where I'm supposed to hold it. Check this out. Look at that. Power tuned by SPAW, by SPA. And it's like a, a metal inserted, what would you call this? It's just, it's just the, the access plate to like the trigger group. Yes. But look how fancy. <laughs> You are covered in Great Dane here. I know. This whole I'm aware. side of your face. Well, that's because I've been hugging on them. They're fantastic. Look at how fancy this is. The att I just love the attention to detail. I love attention to detail things. And this, I love this attention to detail. It's so nice and quality. Like, it's not just like etched or something like that. It's beautiful. I love it. I put them on the guns that, you know, I, I got customers that want the, the little extra attention and a certain performance level out of the gun. and. And I put that on there, and it's it's pretty cool to go down a firing line and see a bunch of your guns on the firing line mm -hmm. well, with just, your name it, on it. It yeah. goes with it, right? Like the whole. I mean, obviously, this whole thing is just very sturdy, very solid. It's a quality gun, and it just it continues. Yeah, that's an awesome gun. I love that gun. What well, enough it? licking on I've it. Never you want to let Ken take us through what it? What is this? Uh, all right, let Ken, let's uh, Ken take us through it. Uh, what, what's the gun? Let's start there. It's, it's a, an FX impact. Yeah, FX a lot of them impact. Aren't gonna know that. It's a 30 caliber compact impact. Did the title not give it away? A lot of it people is, don't know this stuff. I'm bugging. Like and know. there's a lot of impacts. But it's 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 accessorized a little bit, and, and this is the new short one that came out this year, and a 500 millimeter barrel, and it's a 30 caliber. It's got the little 300 cc bottle. I was wondering on it. why the suppressor was so giant. Yeah. Well, you know, shorter shorter barrel. It tends louder. to be a little bit louder. Um, Who makes the suppressor? This is a Donnie FL. It's a Ronin. A Ronin? And, uh, Ronin like the soup? No. Ronin, Ronin, Ronin. Ronin like the Ronin. Chinese something. Ronin, the conch, wasn't <laughs> like, like the noodle? Like the Japanese Ronin. something. No, that's ramen. Oh, that's ramen. <laughs> <It is. laughs> yeah, same thing. But, uh, <laughs> Sorry, Donnie. Ramen, Ronin. Ronin. Me. Ronin's like, he's a, is like a conqueror or yeah. something. But this is my personal gun and... Uh, I got some of the accessories on here that I prefer. This is the new rail. I might get in trouble for showing this, but I think somebody else on the internet's already shown theirs. But oh, and it acts as the trigger guard. Yeah, too? it's the new rail for the compact, and it has the. Who makes it? The Arca Saber Swiss. Saber Tactical. Saber Tactical. There you go. Love me some Saber Tactical. What? This is called an Arca Swiss rail by what's, Saber Tactical. What's the? Yeah. You can put stuff on the side. Yeah, and it has, and they they changed the design on it, so they actually got slots on the side to where you can do T slot accessories. And, and you can put on the or bottom like an or no? Yeah, and you got the 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 Arca Swiss, and then the pick rail at the end. It's kind of like the big yeah. one. Go ahead. Just it's, look look at the look at the width of the rail. 
beautiful. It's a big hunk of metal, so it takes all and the this flexibility one out of it. Continuous piece. Yep. It goes all, all the way. All the way. So this is one it's big Molds into the trigger guard and yep. runs all the way to that little AR grip down there. I love how they put the extended, in extended extended dust covers with the magnet on there. Mm -hmm. Got the small logo engraved mm -hmm. on it. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but the FX gun itself has like two indentations right here and Sabre Tactical duplicated it with this undermount with little indentations like this. It looks sick. Just looks like it's the way it's supposed it to be. It looks the way it's supposed to be. Mm. I love it when accessories look like they're original. Look like they belong. Look like yeah. they belong. Yep. Look not like an they're afterthought. original. Not yep. an afterthought. It makes it look slicker. Like it makes it look more tactical, like military-ish. I, may, I think it makes it look organic. Like it belongs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you like that? We can go with that. You like that word. What is, is Sabre Tactical the same company that made the, that tripod that I really like to play with? No, that's AccuTac. No. Sabre Tactical is Val and Thane Simmons from Utah. Hey. Shut up! And Donnie, hey. hey, and Donnie and Yolanda Du in Florida with Donnie FL Moderators. Together? Yep, so, so Val and Thane are yeah. behind the designs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And Donnie is, ah. is about the production and the distribution and the sales. Oh. This is Val and Thane's making too. And thank them I for they thank them with for the uh, thing. getting the big capacity to the That's FX guns awesome. now. Oh, so it's Good all one big happy them. family if you like them. They yeah. make a nice product. Mm -hmm. oh, well, look I'm at this. So they make proud. this too. Yep. Want to talk is, about that? Yeah, this is, to me, this was a game changer for, that really brought me to the impact. Uh, prior to this, all you had was it's a, it sits on the bag. Yeah, all you all you had before was this back area for your bag. It's horrible yeah. on the bag. And I'm it's more not very I'm used stable. to more a traditional rifle that has mm. the full stock to where yeah. you can slide the bag back and forth mm. for your elevation. So once this came out, this this is what brought me to the impact for shooting competition. What's this called? It's the bag rider, the Sabre ba Tactical bag Sabre rider. Sabre Tactical because they're going to want to find it. And I and I've, I've also found in the guns that you know I. I I turn up to 100 foot pounds or over 100 foot pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm I actually feel like I'm getting better or rigidity out of the gun, as far as harmonics and shooting it, mm -hmm. giving it a little extra, a little bit extra backbone. Yeah. Well, isn't this the gun that you did the video on, where you were like pellet on pellet at 75 yards? Yeah, yeah. This gun at 100 yards, I put 13 shots, and 11 of them were three quarters of an inch of a group. Your video, video is out there. It's on video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what, 30 cal. What Crazy. is this? I've never seen anybody put little stickers on their scope those, before. Those are the scope stickers. You can get those at uh, Utah Air Guns. That's that's their thing. But what does that help you do? Like, does oh. it help you sight it in faster or something? Yeah, I'm, just so you I've can done see my numbers? homework with it. Yeah, I've done my homework with the gun and you know and did all the yeah. the scientific stuff with the ballistic calculator and yeah, yeah, yeah. stray lock. So basically, you use a range finder and you find your target. Yeah. And once you know your range, you just turn it to turn it to whatever range it's set oh, at. Like to the the meters or whatever. Yep. The yards. 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 So oh, so like if you need if you're shooting at 80 yards, you can yep. just click you it just right to that 80 mark. Click it right there and hold it dead on, so you don't have to hold over on your reticle. Oh, that's convenient. Do you want to talk a little bit about Element and also you're a dealer for Warren now, right? Yep. Why don't you hit yep. him up with that? For yep. what? So for Warren. 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 Worn. So the scope I have on here is the Titan, okay. and it's uh, Elements. I mean, everybody knows who Element is pretty much now. We got a lot of newcomers through here, bro. Well, you got the Element. Element Company is pretty much all the scopes are designed by Air Gunners. Uh, Matt Dubber out of South Africa, and you got Ted's holdover. He had he had some design work done to it. And uh, Shane Keller's all all these guys are like yeah. top EBR notch. champion. Yeah, EBR champion, top notch shooters in the air gun world. Basically, it's financially backed by FX Air Guns. Yep. And but the guys at the helm are Matt Dubber, Ted Beer, and Shane Keller. They're yep. making all the decisions. Yep. Shane getting any better than that? Fuck and uh, they got three different ranges. You know, they you, the Helix starts at four hundred dollars, and the Titans at eight hundred. Then you got the Nexus at twelve hundred. And I found, I mean, this is one of the few scopes I really got excited about, and they are, it's just spot on for the money. You're getting so much scope for the money, it's ridiculous. I mean, this is kind of exciting, though, because I feel like a lot of the people, like, this is almost a different segment of the air gunning hobby. 
Like some people, I think most people get into it because it's a less expensive version of fire. No, firearms. it's a more expensive version of firearms. Well, as far as <laughs> as far as the ammo is cheaper, the ammo, but the guns are. I mean, expensive. right, right and, about now. The supporting like, equipment. Who wants expensive. to throw five hundred bucks down yeah. a range right now? But, but what did we just spend on AR ammo? This is what I'm saying. We're talking about <laughs> yeah. we're talking about air rifles. It's like eighty cents a round now for AR. For so two, two, I feel like, but most people are kind of using it as maybe you know planking in the backyard or maybe pest hunting or something like this. And then you know you always hear kind of, you know, people want that more refined experience, so they get into the higher end guns. But right. this is kind of taking it to another level. This is competition. Right. This is grade. money on the line kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. This is like go out and make you some money in a in a some kind of competition, which is kind of cool because it sounds expensive when you're talking about a twelve hundred dollar scope probably a $2,000 gun, you know, and all of these different accessories, mm -hmm. you're probably in it for $3,500. At least. Yeah, At but least. here's the thing, like, I've been studying ARs a lot, and you can go buy an AR-15 for a grand, two grand, three grand, or whatever, yeah. but to get an AR-15 to this level right. of quality, refinement, precision, right. yeah. um, usability, you're talking like a $10,000 right. AR. Yep. Right. So that's the level of... I just think it's fascinating. Performance like, you're getting out of something like this. I mean, it's awesome for competition. And they come like, like going that. out and doing stuff. But you're saying that even from a scope perspective, I mean, yes, it's expensive, but in the grand scheme of things, what you're getting for it oh, the, is the like the bang for the buck. The bang for the buck is or, just out of this world. Yeah, it's great. And if I told you where That's they were cool. making these, which I'm not allowed to, we've been yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to say it for like five episodes. It's we haven't good, made it's a good five brand episodes, of scope, guys. But yeah. With, the, with good That's people behind it. What is this thing right here? What is this um, doohickey? Uh, it's, is it for straps? Yes, yeah, it's for a sling stud. Oh, okay. Cool. Right is that... Because this, this is my little go-to hunting, hunting rifle, but I've, I've very, very found out very fast that this gun... Com it's heavy. Is com it's competitive. This gun, I would not be afraid to take this gun out on a $20,000 purse oh. and shoot it. That's awesome. This is called a single point harness. Okay. The harness this, comes around and, and attaches here. Is this rail? Is this? She don't care. Is I don't care. It's, it's a factory. harness. I got it. It's a strap. I wear a purse. It's it's cool. It'd be like a purse with a single point yeah, strap. Yeah, I got it. Does that get you excited? No. Um, <laughs> th what is this? Does this come on the impact, or is this after like a yeah, rail that you would attach afterwards? That's that's all. That comes that all factory. Comes with it. Factory from FX. So this rail on top. So you put like flashlights and stuff. These side things that you can put it. That all comes. Flashlights, lasers, factory. whatever. That is cool. I like how smooth it is too. What is this power plenum thing? It kind of looks like a hmm. piston. <laughs> That's that's the, the the power plenum that they came out with this year. It was beginning of this, this year. year. Yep. Yeah, basically, uh, instead of originally it was just a smaller tube, but now they got the bigger one. But it's, it it gives a more regulated pressure. The regulated yeah. air sits in there, so yeah. you got more access to. It, it increases the volume of air that the regulator has access to. Yeah. Which which typically means two things: you can run a lower regulator pressure to get the same amount of power. Okay. which makes the gun more efficient yeah okay but also you're able to when you move that regulator pressure up yeah you get even, even more, more power, power than right. if this weren't there how right. does that work just right. that adds volume is it like an extra piece of air in here yes it, and it, it just like holds an air tank it just, a, just a bigger a little air tank air right tank. here oh, okay it's like a spare gas tank on so a fire basically, yeah. basically this little gun little something extra to every Think of a soda bottle. Yeah. Instead of having one soda bottle to drink from, yeah. you got two. Okay, so it's literally just another air tank. Yes, it okay. increases your air. Okay. I was it makes this little gun have the power of what the full size right. guns had yes. a year and a half. Two and it really years helps ago. with efficiency too. I was making. I was just making it more complicated than yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah. I like this. I'm. So, I'm. I'm honestly. I'm so proud of. Justin and Dane and Donnie, like these are beautiful oh, they're products. Badass. They're badass. You know, what's great about these so companies thoughtful. are, you know, Side Shot, Element, you know, Donnie, Saber Tactical. They, yeah. they're the shooters, and they know they know what it takes to make the good product yeah. for the gun. They'll make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they they are real in tune about feedback. Yeah. And they listen to the customers. And That's awesome. And they're, you know they're doing great. Just this weekend, they were moving, in, they're in Orlando. We're moving from a 2,500 square foot house to a 5,000 square foot warehouse, and they've already filled it. Yeah. They could go bigger. Do you know, it gives you an idea. Do you know what I kind of love about this? I mean, this is definitely on a personal note, but 
like I know all of those people we know all of those people which is weird to me to know so many business owners I think in general but to know those people and know <coughs> that they're just good people yeah. yeah yeah like they're just good people and so it's really nice to see them make a product that is that is reflective of kind of their character right and their personalities like it's just a good product yeah. and I'm so happy for them and it's also kind of cool because customer service and good companies is hard to find now yeah I mean it, this this product this there. product is you know their stuff is like you know like the guy that makes stuff out of his garage you know the nice quality stuff yeah mm -hmm. but you, this is a mass produced and it's easy accessible. I yeah. mean, I've, yeah, what, I've, what? I've always got it in inventory. It's, it's, like it's, it's just nice it's to selling. know that you could buy awesome products <laughs> from good people that small you business. know from small businesses that are like that. that well, they ain't small anymore. But it's still, I mean, it, I think I mean, in the realm, they're still, they're still, well, compared, I don't know. Not a multi million, a big, billion bigger dollar me. company. <laughs> I mean, For I'm now. Just, I they move a lot of, they move a lot of aluminum. Yep. I really do. I know I'm. I'm talking to guys. I'm surrounded by guys, but for the women out there, like that's yeah. cool. All right, for anyone falling asleep, we should probably move on. Whatever. I'm proud of them. We're you guys proud of got them. off on a million different tangents. I can get on on a touchy feely tangent. Okay. Do we want to talk about the magazine? But they can buy everything they see here from you, right? Yes, sir. Gotta love that. That's cool. I accept cash check, check or charge. Yep. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Are they fresh eggs? Chickens, eggs, goats. You don't have any chickens. They did make a, make us a pretty mean pulled pork. Oh, it was good. Yeah. It was good. So, okay. Oh. Next question. This is from Tom. What's your nose, puppy? This is unfortunate. Botter. She didn't even care. She didn't even... I hope that... I'm not going to say it. Tom Botter. Tom Botter? What's Tom, you, have a it. you have a funny last name. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not, but it's funny. It's like vata. <laughs> I need some vata. Oh, if you're from vata, Russia. Vata, darling. Ukraine, Bring me like some vata. I got some vata. <laughs> I got your vata right here. Read the okay. damn question. This is supposed to be Hot Sun Neutron Star Blog. I'm sure you're a very Lada nice man. Hotson. I'm not it's judging awesome. you. I just really think your last Lada name is Hotson. funny. I mean, and if you oh, were to look at my yeah, full name, it's ridiculous. So I, you know, I commiserate. Anyway, another awesome video. I learned a lot. I am planning to get my first PCP rifle, considering a Marauder, Avenger, or the Hot Sun Neutron Star like you are reviewing. It will be a hunter for small game in the woods. I have shot break barrels for years, including my go-to RWS 350 Magnum and .22 Cal. I get awesome accuracy with the RWS, so my goal is simply more power at range for larger critters up to coyotes. Any recommendations or a bottom line? Additionally. Although I never owned a PCP, I am a very experienced driver, so compressed air systems are very... Oh, I think he meant to say diver. Mm. So compressed air systems are very familiar. Thanks. This is like a math problem. Yeah, okay, so... Or like a riddle. So is Neutron Star, so Marauder, or Avenger? He's considering the Marauder, the Avenger, or the Neutron Star. Okay. He's looking for a hunter for small game, though up to Coyote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's had an RWS 350 Magnum and .22, um, and his goal in comparison to that RWS 350 Magnum and .22 is to get more power for a larger right. game this like a Coyotes. PCP or yeah, bro. yeah. He's is, never owned a PCP, PCP, but he's very familiar with compressed air systems, so it sounds like he's open to the idea. So recommend either a brake barrel or a PCP. Can I go now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fully understand the situation? I think I did, like 10 minutes ago. Did you? I did. Well, somebody else may not. You want to take it outside? I'm a host. <laughs> you're, a host <laughs> you're a hostile host. Yes, that's correct. Um, so, the Hot Sun Neutron Star video, mm -hmm. that's the gun that loved the slugs. So, the Neutron Star out of those is going to have the nicest trigger and the nicest stock, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to love slugs. And it's mm. probably also going to make the most power. Mm. Okay, that's a gun that's valved for big power. So power, stock, and trigger, I would say Neutron Star. Um, Marauder, if you want um, tunability, 
and uh, probably a little bit of a cost savings mm -hmm. and uh, Crossman's legendary warranty mm. I would say go down the path of the Marauder I don't think you're gonna get to the power that you will with that neutron star and the stock isn't as nice and the trigger while very good is not as nice probably mm -hmm. It can probably be made to be as nice. Um, those guns are probably equally as loud. Um, the Avenger is going to be by far the lightest weight and by far the most tunable platform. If you want the versatility of efficiency on one tune, power on the other, or if you're trying to make the gun work with a specific slug or pellet. Um, the Marauders are proven pellet guns. They're barrels like pellets. I don't know so much about the slugs. He's talking about going to coyotes too. So yeah. I would, I would up the caliber on you. Yeah, you can go up to 25 in any of those. Um, I think you can go to 30 in the hot sun, if I'm not mistaken. But the, uh, the Avenger is going to be like six pound gun, super tunable. I don't think the quality is going to be there on the Avenger. The build quality, the fit and finish, the the build of materials, the materials that it's made out of. So it sounds like it's the longevity. How much you want to spend. You're $300 on an Avenger. Yeah, you're all over the place. I mean, that's why you got to watch the videos how and much, the vlog. Okay, wait. How and much see what's is a the good Marauder? 550 to 750. So how much is an Avenger? 300, 300 bucks. How much is a Neutron Star? Probably 750-ish. Okay. So they're 200 bucks between each of them. So it depends on what you're valuing the most. It sounds like for what you're doing, the Coyotes hunting Neutron Star. Yep. If you don't want to spend 750 Marauder and then Avenger. It's more than the money. It's everything we talked about. Yeah. It's stock. It's trigger. It's yeah. sound. It's weight. It's build quality. It's warranty. It's service but after but the to sale. to his point, that's a lot of options. If it you, is. If you wanted a hunter that could take down coyotes, what would you do? I'm going with a Neutron Star because it lights slugs and I think you can get the most power out of it. Okay. What about that? And like? Coyotes is typically a long range thing. Yeah. And I think that that, that heavier Hatsan stock, yeah. and it's a very ergonomic, good quality stock. Yeah. Turkish walnut. With all, it had all the finger cuts in it, if I remember. It was a damn nice stock, a piece of lumber. Yeah. That's going to probably be the gun. Okay. Yeah. But you're not going to get, um, you're not going to have the control. The slugs are finicky. They want to be at a certain speed. Like it has a hammer spring adjuster, but. The Marauder has hammer, rebound, bow, it's got all sorts of different crazy tunes. So he's got a go-to, right? He's got that RWS-250 Magnum. So let's take slugs out. Oh, that's a break out. barrel. I know. Let's take slugs out of the, out of the equation. Let's say a nice, all-around hunter air rifle. It's just, it's, it's... It depends. It doesn't I'm work asking, like that. It depends I'm on your wallet. I'm asking for preference. I'm asking for preference. I don't money. Money irregardless. My my personal preference. I'm always going lightweight and flexibility, because I want to be able to shoot it in my backyard. Yeah. At 18 foot pounds. Yeah. And I want to be able to go on a hunting trip. Yeah. At 40 foot pounds. Okay. And I always want super lightweight. So for what me, it's that? for me, it's the Avenger. But I've also managed my expectations. That's a $300 air gun. Yep, yep, Do yep, I yep. expect it to last five or ten years like a Hatsan or a Marauder? No, I don't. You know, so it just all depends on... Okay, okay, no, that's yeah. what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Ken, what about you? Basically, I, I agree with Steve. You want yeah. the versatility, and you know that at 300 bucks you're going right. to get, like, a workhorse it's, that you may have to replace It's got to be a proven years. accuracy, especially if you're going for, like, coyote uh, with a small caliber. Even 25 to me is kind of small for a coyote. But if, if, if it's proven accurate, like you say it is with the slugs, and you can put it where you're aiming, yeah. then... Yeah, That's I would the go with that. Star. I would go with yeah, that. One. And here's the other thing. I don't like the Avenger as much as I like that. Yeah. I don't want to have to shoot that out at 100 yards. Because yeah. the thing weighs about as much as that piece of paper. And Got it's it. about as narrow and tall as that piece of paper. Okay. That's a hard gun to these, shoot with big power, especially in a 25. And these, okay. these guns, I mean, all over the place. when they designed these guns, I don't think they had 100, 100 yards in they mind might. for them. But they just... They happen to that. they happen to shoot really Some of well. Some perform well. Perform very the well. The does. That's a great point. Yeah. That's so a really you got you got the Marauders can't. You got to think, think back can. what the gun was designed for. Designed and for. how far out of that box are you going to take that gun to meet your expectations? That's a really great point. Yeah. So it sounds like Neutron Star, out of those three options. For me, on well, a Coyote. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Game up to a Coyote. Because yeah. you want. You are priority number one, accuracy. You priority number one, versatility. 
Yeah, yeah, because you want to make the kill, and you got to have the accuracy to make that kill. Yeah. Especially if you're shooting with a smaller caliber like okay. that. Because for me, it's, it's it's more fun to have one gun and make it do what I want it to do rather than own ten guns to get the, the ten different jobs done. Yeah. I, for me, for some reason, I just appreciate that streamline. You want a Swiss Army knife? I want a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> what is your personal preference, just in general? As a gun? Yeah. Like, do you want a Swiss Army knife? Do you want to have individual purpose-built guns? Uh, I'm more of a, I once like I get a gun, get yeah, gun. once I get a gun set up to a certain, certain uh, task, Yeah. I tend to leave it like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a gun that's meant for a hundred yard competition. and I, I tend to leave it. I ain't gonna touch it if it's yeah. not broke. Don't yeah. fix it. Yeah. Okay. And, and there's gonna be a lot of them that are like that. Air gunners want ten guns in their closet. Yeah. They want to pick a tool yeah. for the job, and that's the part job. of the fun of it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. So I guess Tom, the big takeaway for you is make a list of your priorities. List your top three yep. things that you want out of this thing. Is it money? Is it accuracy? Is it versatility? Is it yep. you know caliber? Is it lightweight? Yep. Whatever those things, those three things are. Is it comfortable? By far, that Neutron Star is the most pleasant to and then to hold. And then send us another question once you <laughs> once you list all your priorities. And one thing he has going for him, these guns are really affordable. Yeah, yeah. They are affordable. So, so if he had, you know, a couple different guns for different purposes. Yeah. yeah, you could buy a Neutron Star and an Avenger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So take into Whew, consideration your priorities, take into consideration <laughs> what you want to use it for, and also your personality. <clears throat> How do you use this stuff around your house? How do you you use your guns? Yeah. You know, for what you spend on a, on, you. On, a think, custom wear, on a custom Crossman, you know, you could buy an Avenger and a Neutron Star. That's true. Or you, or you could buy the Marauder and go sure. get a Boyd's Blaster stock or a Mad Dog stock. Sure. You know, put a regulator in it. Then, you know, put a put a moderator on it. Put a depinger in it. Then, yeah, you put all that money into it, and <laughs> then guess, you get an impact. Guess what you could have got from the get go? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Then so you this, get an this, this is the thing. It's everyone's just trying to find yeah. their way with this stuff. But yeah. a lot of guys they like to do that, and they'll they'll buy the six hundred dollar rifle and build it, build it up, and have their heart in the gun. Yeah. And yeah. Prioritize you know, it. That's the fun part. Prioritize it. For the tool for the job. Yeah. Perfect example. Last week we had we have a squirrel proof like a double squirrel proof bird feeder. It has like the cone baffle. It has the feeders where they get on them and the weight of the squirrel like pulls them shut so that they can't get on them. And we had one squirrel figure out how to leap from our air conditioning condensing unit over over right onto the pole. And then the other two... And overcome the baffle. And overcome the, the baffle. And the other two watched him do it and figured it out. Learned the behavior. So while we, we had no squirrels for the longest time, and then we had three squirrels draining the tar out of our feeders, what I grabbed to do the job was the Avenger at 18 foot-pounds with a big old fat Donny FL on the front. I feel bad because we definitely <laughs> killed the smartest of the squirrels. Like, we, we set did. evolution back. But it's better than climbing up to that house and refilling <laughs> it with bad. seed every 72 hours. So. <laughs> We're like, nope, too smart for your own good. Yeah. It, you know what? But it, you knew you, you picked that gun up and you knew I that picked gun it, was going to do it. I picked it because I knew I had it tuned to like 18, 19 foot pounds. I put a, a Barracuda Hunter green pellet in it, a tin pellet, because, you know, I, I'm worried about backdrop. You yeah. know, I knew, I knew it would be ultra quiet, ultra light, because I'd be doing it from the fly. It was, it was good for that job. Maybe you do like a purpose-built gun. Well, I've got it set up for... For small games. For, for testing, handle, handling problems the around the, the house. Cane toad and cane toads cane toads and, toads and problematic smart we got squirrels. got cane toads the size of footballs. Unbelievable. Example. They're ridiculous. And she's not exaggerating. I am not. Okay. <laughs> Last question. Yay. Insert. I sure hope we hit record. Oh, my God. <laughs> this... You kill me. <laughs> Oh my uh, God! You'd be on your own. You'd be on your own. <laughs> um, I'm, I would be with Ken. I'd go with Ken. I'd be in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is for this is from Trevor. Here's your drink. Fifty-five thirty-four. Oh, um, it was posted to the Air Venturi Avenger Tuning Guide. All right, Steve. Your honest opinion. Get in that mindset. Huh? Honest opinion. I'm always shake, honest. Shake it off. Shake I ain't it off. scared. Bring it. Shake it off. Shake um, what off? Shake off whatever. Get Are you implying that I'm a fibber? No, no. I'm implying that you're very political, politically correct. Ooh. You could run for office. Ooh. Run it. Steve for president. Steve for president. <sighs> no 
not okay. political. You're just very conscientious. Sure. Okay. Of course I'm. Honest opinion. I'm kind. You're conscientious. But I'm honest. Yes, that's true. But th I, when I think of honest opinion, I think of blunt truth, regardless of kindness. It hurts. Even if it hurts. Well, no. I'm going to make it painless, baby. All right. <laughs> okay, your honest opinion. Avenger versus Gauntlet for power accuracy and tunability. Avenger. Oh, yeah. Avenger. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I not, you know, and you know. Sorry, dramatic sorry, as Umarex. I made it. And I, I, like, I like the people at, it, I like the people at Umrex. I've gotten to know them. Yeah. You know, and um, they're good people, good product. So I don't mean. But I've seen some. I don't mean to hurt feelings, but that I've Avenger, seen some hands gauntlets, down. Though, but they've had a lot of heart put in them in time. I mean, it was out there competition lines. There was there was gauntlets shooting. Yeah, you take that you take that Avenger out of the box, clean the barrel. If you want to put a Donny on the front, there's a new one that they just designed with the Up North Air Gunner that's completely badass for that rifle. And. Uh, Geez, you can do a lot of different things with it, especially if you go with one of the middle calibers, like a 22. Mm -hmm. You can run that thing to, you know, 40 plus foot, 45 foot pounds, or you can run it down to both the both the guns down to huge. 18 foot pounds and make it work and work good. Huge following on those guns. So Avenger. Yeah. You can't yeah. say too much, too much bad about it. I mean, it is what it is. There's nothing you. I can do about that. <laughs> you got the gauntlet guys come out here and lynch you. The gauntlet guys are very passionate. There's going to be a bunch of them that get yeah. angry in the comments. And yeah. Well, Team Humorex, they, they're they, going to they say go I'm biased they and I'm on one side or the other. But I think you made it very obvious. They shoot what they sell. Yeah, I uh, think you made it very obvious that after you read The Avenger, you were very in love with it. Yeah, look, all those reviews paid the same before you say I'm in someone's pocket. And it's my job to be honest and relay the information. Now, granted, The Avenger is a three-year newer design than The Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I mean, when the gauntlet came out, it was the shiznit. So, I mean, that's just the way of things. Yeah. I'm sure Umrex will respond maybe with have something. A gauntlet MK2 coming, maybe. I'm sure they'll respond with something. That's just the way of things. So. Let's jump into the pool. Uh, you go ahead. Fully clothed. No. We have a four and a half hour drive home, so I'm already showered and good to go. It'd be funny if all three of us jumped You're in. covered in gray day and hair. You need to. Do you want to bring your dogs in here to say hi quick before we say goodbye? Harley was here. Girls, come on. Get him come up here. Azul, you, Azul's been checking you out. She's been oh. coming by. And Marty. Come These here, These things squishy. are bigger than I am. Oh. Come here, baby. Azul. She's so like, whatever. Come here, girl. Come here, baby. She's a big girl. Hi, baby. She's a big girl. Look at that yeah. mug. How <laughs> could mean, you not have great, look great at this dang thing's, hair all over you? This thing's bigger than I am, man. It's so She's like a, a year, right? Yeah, uh, 14 Look months. The Look at the bee. She had to scratch your ears. <laughs> She's so cute. Where's Marty? She went inside like an hour She's ago. This, this All right, we're at an hour and 11 air, minutes. Air, so. air condition. Let's say bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Harley Quinn.